Arielle, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you guys for having me. We're thrilled to have you here. <laughs> now, Arielle, we're going to dive right in because I know you've had a ton of experience in the world of investor relations, but I know also that you had a very pivotal experience very early on in your career at one of the first places that you worked at, at Goldman Sachs, big firm. Okay. And here you were starting out and you had a mentor gave, that gave you some very valuable advice. So yeah. tell us about that moment and tell us about how that kind of shaped your trajectory and your journey in investor relations. Yeah. So, so I started out, I would say my career in investor relations at Goldman Sachs. I'd worked like a year before at Northern Trust. Um, but Goldman was my real introduction. I call it my uh, residency into like learning those skills and really getting like uh, baptism by fire on there, which was super helpful. Mm. But um, mm -hmm. early in my career, I was oh fresh out of college. I just started um, my MBA and started at Goldman at the same time. So wonderful, you know, thing to do at the same exact time of your life. Lots of work. I wanted to kind of get a good understanding of what I can do to um, really grow my career and kind of grow myself while I was there. And I had a boss named Ryan Ross. Shout out to you. <laughs> and he uh, he would really take the time to talk with me, but really candid talk. So one of the first conversations that we had was about my career. And he's, he remembers this differently than I do. Um, but I remember asking him, what do I need to do to be in your role, in your position? And I was, like I said, 20 something out of college. I was the youngest person on my team at the time and the only um, black person on my team. So uh, I knew that that path, especially in finance, which is traditionally, you know, white male dominated was going to be a difficult one for me. Um, but difficult never s scared me. So talking to mm -hmm. someone who's really able to, um, read in between the lines and give me some great advice. And one of the first yeah. things he said, can I just say before you dive into what he said was, you know, the quality of your life is the quality of the questions that you ask. Yeah. And I think to be a young 20 something and to, to have the courage to yeah. go to your boss and ask that <laughs> question, how do I get to where you are is not only it, not only cuts through the noise, but it tells your boss that here is a woman who's driven, who's ambitious, mm -hmm. who has high goals. And then that tells him exactly where you want to go so that he can then tailor his approach and his coaching yeah. to help you get to that point. And so I love that you asked that question. I, I'm going to add that to my arsenal of yeah. questions. <laughs> we should all be asking that. And it's like courage or audacity, you know, a fine yeah. line. <laughs> it's a fine line. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. But um, in that same vein, he sat down and immediately told, this was like maybe my first couple of weeks there. And he immediately told me in the first three months, you need to learn how to push the buttons. In the, in the next three months, you should learn how to do your job. I should be able to ask you how to do it. And in that full year, you should be able to teach someone how to do it. And if you don't know how to teach someone how to do it, you don't know what you're doing. And that was one of the first things he said. So it gave me such a good path. And so then I came back um, uh, several times after that, just chatting with him. And I was trying to figure out how to navigate conflict, right? And the main thing, as I said, I'm afraid that if I speak out or if I say, no, this is wrong, that I'm going to be pegged as like an angry Black woman or someone who is un, um, that you're not able to work with, difficult to work with. And I said, I'm afraid of that because I, I know in the past that can follow, especially women in business, women in finance who are assertive. And he said to me, men never think about that. He said, as long as you are communicating in a way that is respectful and that is clear, um, I will always support you. And that was huge for me. That was like, set me off to the races. And from that point on, I wasn't afraid to meet things head on. I wasn't afraid to be in a difficult position and I wasn't afraid to voice my opinion. I, but I learned how to listen and how to navigate, uh, the conversation. So I was able to be heard, um, amongst my peers or people who were, um, just in, in higher level positions than I was. Um, so yeah, that was, that was huge. And I carried that with me and, and constantly worked on tailoring my, um, response, listening and watching how other people responded based on what he said. He said, men don't think that way. And he would constantly correct me on that and show me and provide examples, which I felt was really helpful to kind of, um, build my career. 
I wonder, you know, where did the finance piece come into this story? Because you could have had that courage from your grandmother and passed down through to your parents, your, your, you know, other siblings, that sort of thing. And you could have probably taken that courage into any field, but you chose finance and yeah. investing, which is again, an, another level of hard and difficulty and to break into, especially as a female, as a black female in mm-hmm. this world. So what about finance drew you? Yeah. Yeah. That's another great question. So, um, my family, uh, I'm speaking about my dad's, I haven't even talked about my mother's side, but on my dad's side, um, they, my, so my great grandmother worked really hard. Right. And she actually picked cotton, which is so like interesting for other people to hear because you think it's so far removed, but it's not, you know, um, my grandfather who's still alive, my grandmother who's still alive also picked cotton, their siblings. And they would talk, talk, talk to us about stories and how, like my grandfather was like, yeah, I used to get the bad wet. So it'd be heavier. So I could leave early, you know, things like that, which is <laughs> funny now. And if you There's knew a life hack right there, <laughs> I call him Papa. But if you knew, if you knew my Papa, you would just think that's so funny, you know, because we're like, okay. Um, but it's interesting because I, I, I say all the time to your your comment about courage that I am living my ancestors' wildest dreams right now, you know, because to to be to hear these stories, to grow up with, grow up with them, to see like they all live in the same area, so to see where they lived and to learn and hear and um, just physically touch the areas that they fought through. You know, I say I am here because of the things that they survived, you know? So with my grandmother and um, my great grandmother and my grandmother, my dad's mom, um, they worked hard, you know, and they would work ex- extra shifts just to get my dad, you know, a, a, a little book that he wanted. And he went on to become the first doctor in our family. He's a vascular neurologist. Um, and wow, I'm big time, <laughs> not just like a, you know, like a pediatrician or a family yeah. doctor, but vascular, wait, say it again. Vascular, vascular neurologist. Neurologist. Yes. Holy cow. And he specializes <laughs> in strokes, you know, and, um, spent and, and went straight from high school to a six year medical program, you know? So, I, so he was, you know, really went for it. And then, um, his other siblings, they, one also went into, um, uh, medicine. I have, a uh, former police officer and a principal, you know, so these were people that took the opportunity to push forward and kind of raise that bar. Um, but there was no one really in finance, you know, and so they understood how to save, you know, and, and were told how to save and these types of things, but that next step was missing. So, um, when I went to school, I initially went to school to be a music engineer to which my parents said a producer. No, no, (laughs) No, try again. (laughs) You know, um, but then I, I, I got into some business classes, fell in love with finance and just to see how much freedom that there was there. Once you were able to kind of learn this, this mystical, I put mystical in quotes, um, you know, um, philosophies that are, you know, unless you take those classes, you're not really learning some of these uh, things that should be available to everyone. And um, that was huge for me because I was, I saw a path for me to kind of push it one step for, further and, and bring this information back to my family um, to kind of, you know, navigate and take us even further. All right, Ariel. Well, final question is um, if people want to get in touch with you or learn more about all that we're doing now that you're part of the illustrious Good Egg team, what's the best place that people can go? They can join the Good Egg Investor Club um, and that's at goodegginvestments.com slash invest. Fantastic. Well, I'm sure uh, the listener is going to want to connect with you and to learn more to get a chance to ask their questions. So Ariel, thank you so much for being here with us and the listener today. We're so grateful for you. Excited to see what you do on the Good Egg team. Awesome. Thank you so much. It was wonderful talking to you, Susan and Annie. This was great. And I'm so excited to be here um, and excited to connect with all of our listeners.